I think it's time we blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. of One Minute Reactions right to Black Clover episode 111, The Eyes in the Mirror. Yes, we're coming at you with another live reaction. As long as you guys give me a nice heads up and I haven't already started making my video, I will definitely rock a live reaction. Especially when it comes to Black Clover, the last few episodes have been freaking amazing and I definitely have high hopes going forward. Now, last we left off, it seems as the Black Bulls finally made it to the Royal Capital, as soon as they all were reunited, they were once again split in half. Yes, half of the team is dealing with Gauche and Marie and the other half were taken to the dream world by captain of the coral peacocks dorothy unsworth and i have to say if the preview of the last episode is any indication how this one's going to be i am fucking excited so with that being said let's get into this live reaction okay here we go yes it is bright and colorful like i wanted i like magnus hair like that way better than the slick pack i wonder if it's some type of like actual pocket dimension Ooh, seen her awake. She's a cutie. So she's God in this dream world, this glamour world or whatever. She's literally can manipulate anything she wants. She's, oh, <laughs> damn. Did Rogue witness that as an attack spell? Is that how they could dodge it? Oh, okay. How come, how the hell did Sally go from creepy to cute? Yeah, they really are. They just some fucking OP, OP spells going on right now. Yeah, don't forget Charmy too. I just like to eat. A lot. I just like to eat a lot. Ah, oh, she summoned their polar opposites. Ground, uh, grounded the lightning and water. You know, put out the fire. Yeah, she's basically God in this realm. Like she can, if she can manipulate anything besides maybe other people's magic, because she can't. She didn't turn, you know, the lightning or the fire into, you know flowers or some shit so she, she can only manipulate this world whatever is based in this world not the actual other people and stuff otherwise she could just summon people into there and just fucking turn them into a uh, you know a straw doll or some shit oh god charmy is so fucking cute yeah water is super conductive when it comes to to water okay what is she, what sally's up to something she's fucking pulling off some kind of plan what is going on steam oh so it wasn't steam. She used the the lightning to mess with the water's properties and then the fire to make it explode. But are they actually real though? She's not summoning them from another place. She's literally creating them out of her mana just because they work on, you know, the principles of, you know, physics and reality and nature and all that shit. They're not really real. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an uphill battle. Sleeping gas maybe? Oh, they'll fall asleep. So then now they added to this already immense battle and now a ticking clock to it. So, see, I feel for Sally. I cannot see shit without my glasses. Oh, so whatever she visualizes. Oh, shit. No way. God, Sally, you are a freaking boss. This reminds me of something. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, Was it season one of uh, Certain Magical Index when they came up against... Uh, uh, against the alchemist whatever he thought you know was reality and Toma made him believe that he was you know going to die or you know lose and eventually he did damn this episode is good okay so we're back to Yami and Jack I honestly thought these two would never get along but it seems like they're literally like best friend rivals like they're just they're a great pairing you're both a pain in the ass. Let's leave it at that. Is this Dave? Oh, David again. Let's see. Let's see how he uses his dice magic. Oh, that's pretty potent. So the better the roll, the more potent it is. There we go. The apostles of Sephira again. They're the ones waiting for Yuno's pendant, you know, to initiate their 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 final plan. And now we're at the other battle. Yeah, they're basically stuck at this point because they can't hurt Gauche or Marie. Like, they can't. They have to dispel it. Oh, what are you gathering up for? Oh, they teleported him. Was it transportation through the mirrors? Yeah, okay. I've seen that. I've seen that spell before. Yeah, because 
Doesn't he have key? Yeah, how about an all-out attack? Oh, what are you gonna do, Astro? What are you gonna do? Oh, what are you doing? What is going on? What did Gordon and Gray do? What was that? What was... Oh, <laughs> here we go. It gave him enough time to actually transform. His voice is a tad bit deeper, too. I want to I wanna point that out. There's a, there's a manliness to it. Slight, but it's there. Oh, no way. How the f- Oh, one giant ass fucking mirror. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's gonna just eviscerate him. Oh, come on. Is that a fucking rocket ship? Oh, Black Bulls to the fucking rescue. I told you, Gordon and, and Gray, their combination is just fucking top notch. My question is, how the hell does Henry know how to make a giant mech and a fucking rocket ship? Like, how the fuck does he know this stuff? Oh, they're running low. They're all on empty right now. But you gotta push past your limits. I think this is his first time in actual battlefield. I think it's the first time outside of the base, too, so it's like, fuck. Oh, so he's actually using it. His blood vessels, muscles, basically all of his organs are very frail. So without magic, he's basically gonna die. <gasps> So if he uses all of his magic, he's gonna fucking die? Yeah, so he is a noble. Did they? I think they said that already. Oh, they called him fucking creature. <sighs> family over actual, f the name of the family over the actual family. That's, that's good parenting. So if it wasn't for Yami and the others coming and actually basically giving them, giving him their mana, their mana, he would have fucking died. At this distance, Yami should be affected. He's been on the outside looking in the entire time. He can't get close to his friends, his, you know, his comrades. Ah, I feel for him. I really do feel for him, you know, being, being like that. Oh, he broke free. There's that, you know, self-sacrifice we see. Oh, what the fuck? Come on. Lame. That was a really good episode. The dream world is fucking everything I hoped it was. And like I said, seeing that Sally was just fucking an MVP this episode. I guess when it comes to, you know, actually creating things or anything in this world can, is just based on your, you know, your mental vision of it. If someone says, you know, think of a panda, think of a panda, 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 panda. All of a sudden you, you'd be thinking of a panda. It's like trying not to think about the elephant and all of a sudden you think about an elephant. So it's basically a double-edged sword. Even though it's super fucking powerful, she can summon basically anything into this world, anything she envisions. But like I said, that can be used against her as seen by Sally. Even Dorothy was fucking, you know, really surprised when that happened. All right, let's watch the petite and the preview. Dream world? Come on, make a dream world. Ah, oh, crap. You can have a nosebleed? Nosebleed? <laughs> he, can't, he can't help but the nosebleed. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Oh shit, that was an amazing episode. We got a bunch of highlights. I wanted to see the dream world and we got a little sneak peek. I mean, it was more than a little sneak peek, but we got a sneak peek of it. So first and foremost, like I said, the dream world. The dream world was everything I wanted. It was bright, it was colorful. We found out, you know, the inner workings of it. Basically, Dorothy in this world, whatever she can envision, she can summon. And although that gives her a, you know, a god-like ability, it can be a double-edged sword. As we saw when Sally manipulated her, first summoning her a pair of glasses, as well as, you know, pretty, pretty please, I want an exit, I want an exit, I want an exit, and all of a sudden, a bunch of exits start popping up. So although it is, I mean, basically god-level type shit within this realm, dimension, or whatever this spatial area, area is, even though, you know, Luck said the space itself is infinite, Dorothy is a fucking god, but it can be, you know, twisted to the Black Bull's advantage. But as we saw in the preview, though, when she starts locking up those excess with chains, oh, it looks like we're going to be in for another good battle. Like, if you can't make her summon or force herself to, you know, make you guys exit, I wonder how you're actually going to defeat her. Can you even get close to her? Because we saw that awesome fucking defense spell pop up. When again, Sally using Luck in his lightning, as well as 
magnet and his fire against her water, created this huge fucking explosion, like basically did no damage. So it's like, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle, but this is just honestly bright and colorful. It's something that, you know, basically ever since, you know, you know, the death of the Wizard King, it's been nighttime. It's been, you know, drab and, and dull and dark and boring. Like this is our first, you know, real colorful moment. And it's, 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 you know what? It's doing pretty well. It's hit me in all the right spots. Now cut to the other half of the Black Bulls. We're still dealing with Gauche and Marie or Drut and Eclat. I know I'm, I'm, I'm always going to fuck up, you know, pronunciations. Let's just, you know, roll with it. We'll move past it, but we'll refer them as Gauche and Marie. Yeah, they're still dealing with them. And you know, what sucks is you can't basically attack. You can't defeat basically anyone. They're hostages. This is a hostage situation we're dealing with because all of these elf souls have, you know, parasitically globbed on to the human host. I mean, there's still humans in there, even when like one, uh, the more despicable humans, uh, let's just say Langris, or at least, you know, the version of Langris we saw before the reincarnation, he was, pre he was a pretty, he was an asshole. But at the same time, you can't kill him because he is human. And at this point, he is being taken over by a freaking an elf. Like he's, 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 like I said, a hostage. You can't beat these people. The only way to actually beat them is to dispel them. And with Gauche and Marie teaming up, Gauche's mirrors are, you know, OP to begin with. And now he's backed with like super elf powers. Then he can manipulate, you know, Marie's gaze that's basically paralytic. And when it's evil able to like temporarily stop, you know, Black Asta. So it's like, they're a pretty unstoppable duo. And like I said, you can't fucking hit them. You can't hurt them. You have to get in close, dispel them or whatever. Like there's basically two tough battles on both fronts. Not to mention, we still have the mysterious David to deal with. He is in fucking with Yami and Jack with his dice magic. We learned that, you know, the better the roll, the more potent the magic is going to be. To at what extent, I don't know. He says he rolls a six and he was able to, you know, basically keep them busy. You know, buying time for the Apostles of Sephira, which, you know, there's another issue we're dealing with it. You know, the giant summoned underworld shadow palace. We still have a you know in his pendant to deal with. So like there is just so much shit going forward. Like, oh, these episodes have been fucking amazing. I, I, like I said, today's highlight, definitely the, the dream world, the glamour world, whatever you want to call it. MVP has to be Sally. She is showing off her smarts. And like I said, I, I'm surprised how easy it was to look at her, you know, episode, what was it? Low 30s? Was it 31, 32? Where she just, you know, globs onto Asta, go from creepy to cute. Like in this episode, she, t it was a pleasure to watch her. So it's like, I don't know, she has the potential of maybe being a black bull. I don't know. She definitely has a addictive personality when it comes to you know, experiments and shit like that. But that's basically what has gotten her into trouble. She, you know, she globbed onto the eye of the midnight sun, probably with promises of you can do whatever experiment you fucking want. No one ever told her no, like, hey, you should be experimenting on humans. Like, I, I hate to think of how bad she actually is compared to what we saw in today's episode. It's like, ugh, I'm getting a mixed emotion when it comes to her because I was actually rooting for her. Like, she was MVP today. Like I said, this episode was fucking amazing. I am just enamored, absolutely enthralled by the potential of this dream world going forward. Like I said, after the, the 20, 30 episodes of just this dark nighttime shit, I am so glad we get a colorful, bright, beautiful, you know, environment. This atmosphere has fucking changed. Going, going back and forth, it's kind of annoying, but still, this... It's just a nice pick me up from all the drab darkness we've been dealing with throughout, you know, the entire of this arc. So with that going forward and still two major battles and plenty of other even bigger battles on the horizon, I cannot wait for future episodes.